Good afternoon, everybody. And I'd like to introduce you to Terra Uranium. Uh, we're a new company. We only listed on the ASX on the 8th of September this year. And uh, we're already up and running uh, with an extensive exploration program in the Athabasca. Uh, that's in Canada. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of background, uh, not only in our company, but also on the nuclear market and how things are going. I guess we should start with a little disclaimer. Um, everybody should read these and uh, file them away. Next slide, please. Yep, right, you've all read that. Great, we'll go on to the next one. Uh, a little bit on the nuclear industry for those who aren't familiar with it. Uh, there's been an enormous change. Uh, myself and my team have been in uh, uranium companies for over 10 years now, and we've seen an enormous change. And I guess it's that people are realizing that if you need baseload power, you need nuclear as some component of the system. And there's been a recognition now by uh, governments all around the world that this is the case, uh, particularly Europe and North America. And uh, we're positioned in North America. Uh, next slide, please. This, uh, we borrowed this from uh, Visual Capitalist and I particularly like this, this slide because it gives you uh, basically the history of the nuclear industry right back to the 1950s. And the bottom chart there shows you the uh, way that it's changed or grown with time. And we had a major uh, inflection point around 1990, which was the collapse of the previous Soviet Union. And above that, you've got a, a cross section of the Athabasca Basin showing the discovery history. And two of the largest deposits, which are Cigar Lake and MacArthur, which are a little bit deeper, were both found in that period around the 1980s into 1990. And really since then, most of the uh, discoveries have been very small or they've been outside the basin itself, such as um, the recent uh, Arrow deposit of next gen. Uh, we see that uh, also the, the, the major producers in the world has changed. Australia continues to be a major producer through South Australia, but that's as a byproduct. And then we have Canada and Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, of course, is not uh, part of Russia these days, but is heavily impacted by the sanctions as a lot of their services and exports go through Russia. So they're heavily impacted. Uh, so that's a little bit of background on the industry. If we go to the next slide, we'll have a look at uh, what we're doing. So we're focused on, uh, as a company, Terra is focused on looking for these very large bot deposits a little bit deeper in the basin. Uh, how we do that is it's people. It's always people. You've got to have the best people. Funding, uh, we're just listed. We've got the funds for that. It's finding the right targets and the tools. And I'll run you through a little bit of how we look under deep cover for major uranium deposits. Uh, that little bar chart at the top emphasizes in red there, it's drilling. Uh, at some point, you do have to drill these things. That's when you make a discovery. That's when you get a major uplift in value. Uh, if we just uh, look at the next slide, that'll show us the uh, a little bit of a, a 101 on, on uranium deposits in the Athabasca. What really stands out there is that these are the richest deposits in the world by order of magnitude. They're extremely high grades. Uh, deposits like MacArthur and Cigar, the core deposits are measured in percents and not just one or two, we're talking 10 or 20 or 30 percent uranium. That's just absolutely unheard of. There's an unusual geology here. We have a major thick sandstone unit sitting, sitting over a basement, an Archean basement and major faults where the uh, mineralization is, is moving. And uh, we have a redox reaction right at that boundary between the sandstone and the basement, often um, uh, catalyzed by a carbon, a carbonaceous material in the basement faults. But you can see those little red deposits there right at the unconformity. They're the ones we're looking for. Right, if I just go on to the next slide, that'll show us what we've got. So all the major to pass deposits are sitting uh, on the right-hand side there, running down, uh, just on the outside of the, sorry, inside the basin and just outside it. We identified uh, the Cable Bay shear zone, which has been known about since uh, the 60s and 70s. If you remember that earlier slide, this is a major structural zone with known uranium, but there hasn't been a lot of exploration done there since that uh, change in the 1990s because it was considered a little bit too deep. We're looking at uh, depths there of uh, 
250 to our, our shallowest at Hawcroft, but right, most of them are around the eight, 900 metre mark. I guess the big change that's happened there is that we are now move, moving to solution mining, which is where we actually extract the uranium uh, by dissolving it, similar to the shallower ISR deposits. That means that if we find a deposit under deeper cover, we definitely can extract it. Uh, we uh, search through the database. Uh, our um, CEO Canada, Mike McClelland, has worked in this area for the last 10 years. He knows every deposit and we, went, we focused straight in on these areas. We have almost a thousand square kilometres of tenements in our own name. Uh, we're not in joint ventures. These are not earn-ins. Uh, these are 100% owned by Terra and uh, we don't have any royalties or offtakes. We find something here, it's ours 100%. I'll quickly run through the major, our major targets. If we go on to the next, the, the next one, uh, oh, sorry, I'll give you a quick run through of what we've done. So we only listed in September, so we're in, we're in uh, just early December. It's only been three months, but this is a very professional team. We've hit the ground running hard. First, we've uh, flown ge uh, geophysics, uh, ZTEM, which is a deep seeking electrical method. Uh, that little picture there in the center shows you the, the preliminary results from the ZTEM across our properties, we are getting extremely strong conductors in the basement. So we know there's something down there. We're not quite sure what it is yet, but there's definitely conductors there. Uh, we've also done a trial of a, pro a process called ANT from Fleet Geospace in Adelaide in Australia. It's, this is a type of passive seismic. Uh, we've just had the preliminary results back. I can't present them here, but they are also very strong. So that's for mapping the basement and uh, targeting, helping target us in the, on the right spots. The logistics camp is being permitted, should come through next week. We've had uh, verbal approval. We're just waiting for the paperwork uh, and the dozers will be building the ice roads. Uh, well, they commence this week and we'll be ready to get into that program uh, early in the new year. Uh, and the drill, the tenders for the drilling have already been called. Uh, one of the big issues you'll find in areas like this, where this is a very hot air exploration area, is getting people and equipment and drill rigs. Very, very hard to get. But of course, with our connections and our board that I'll go through at the end, uh, we're able to achieve that. Um, I'll just run through the projects one by one. Um, next slide, please. The, the most southern project is Parker. This, this was uh, the least known about, but the most intriguing. Uh, we had an old mega tem anomaly here, which is a very old 1960s airborne electrical method with a big anomaly on it. We've got a Rano immediately to the south of us with some old drill holes with significant uranium numbers in them. And the ZTEM, which we've just flown on the right, is showing that, that uh, we do have a major conductor there. And we also have some surface signs of uh, uranium in a boulder trail. Very interesting area. Uh, it's probably coming up our priority list quite quickly. Uh, the second target area is, is right in the centre and is the largest. Um, next slide, please. Uh, this is Passfield Lake. This is the one we started on. Uh, we have basically two areas to the east and the west. The little image on the top left is the one we had in our prospectus. So within the last three months, we've done the ZTEM on the top right. And we've also some, done some VTEM, so some very strong conductors there. Uh, again, we're seeing signs of uranium at surface, very low, but it's there. And uh, we'll certainly be getting into this area. This is the largest, and we also have targets east and west of the lake in this one, and, and also in the north. Uh, and the third uh, target area is right at the northern end of our properties and is the shallowest. This is called Hawcrock. Um, this is a very intriguing one because we have a very low, strong dispersion trail. This whole uh, area, the whole Athabasca has been heavily glaciated. It's very cold there at the moment. It's currently minus 20. Uh, it gets down to minus 40 in the winter. Um, the glaciers uh, do take the tops off these deposits and we can get radiometric dispersion trails. This is the shallowest, but also has never been flown with uh, geophysics. So we're quite excited to have a look at this one. Um, it, it'll be the easiest for us to test. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and as I said right at the start, it's all about people. We have assembled an amazing team. These are the guys who put the company together. So for myself, there's uh, Dr. Daryl Clark, ex-Chemico, ex-BHP, uh, Troy Vasoli, uh, very experienced uh, in both mine uh, 
production and exploration, formerly uh, with NextGen, uh, was developing their major project. Uh, Doug Engdale, uh, one of the major contractors in the basis, but also a strong uh, experience in production geology. And Dr. Kylie Prendergast, an extremely uh, successful explorer. We're all geologists, all with a very good track record of discovery. But we should also point out our management team. These are the guys on the ground in Canada. Next slide, please. Um, headed by Mike McClelland. He's the last 10 years with Cameco, heading up all their exploration in, in this part of the basin. Uh, Nova Taylor and Jules, uh, finance people who along with me look after the company. Jennifer Burgess, ex extremely experienced exploration uh, manager. Uh, particularly uh, in uh, very low or subarctic areas. She worked on uh, Rio Tendo's Diabic Diamond Project and was partly responsible for that discovery. Kyle Patterson is a geophysicist and Tom is a geochemist. All these guys are in-house. We have our own in-house team who are on the ground. Um, next slide. Don't, and, and just to finish off, we, we realise our responsibilities. ESG is very important to us. We have engaged already and are continuing to engage with the First Nations people in Canada, and uh, they are strongly supportive of what we're doing. If you don't have a license to operate on the ground, you won't be successful. Thank you very much, everybody. And if there are any questions, um, we can take them, David. Thanks, Andrew. Great presentation. Uh, certainly hit the ground running um, since listing only a few months ago. Um, there's some questions come through. A bit of intrigue, I suppose, or, or not really intrigue, but how do you how do you actually assemble a team as as strong as this, and assets as as uh, prospective of this at a time when you know it's pretty hard to find good projects, but you've clearly done a good job of that, but also assembled a a, a team that's capable of delivering those projects. Yeah, good question, David. Um, I guess it comes down to people, as it always does. Um, I was approached by Daryl Clark, who's been a friend of mine for 30 years. Uh, knows he's in Canada. He's an Australian, but he lives in Canada. Uh, he said he had this great idea to form a company. So he and I got together and I immediately said to him, well, I need a guy on the ground in Canada who, who lives and breathes these things and knows him back to front. That's where Mike came from. Uh, Troy and Doug have, have worked together in the mines, uh, the, in the uranium mines, knew each other very well. They came in onto the team. And then Kylie's worked with me for the last 10 or 12 years and several of the companies that I've formed. And she's ex-Rio and is a superb explorationist. So it's people, David, pretty much. And then I should put a big shout out to Niv Dagan and the guys at Peak Asset Management because they put the company together they raised the, uh, they ran the IPO for us. Absolute brilliant process. And uh, Atomic, I guess, who were running all the back room for us. They're doing the CFO and company secretary. And so, once you had the team together, was that, did it make it easy then to find the ground? Um, to some extent, yes, because uh, Mike and the team knew that they had projects that they'd been busting to have a go at for a very long time. And as we said, they were a little bit deeper in the basin. So people had assumed that they were not mineable. But with the changes in technology, particularly what Denison are doing at Wheeler River, they've now done their first full scale trial mining of solution mining at a depth of 600 metres below surface. And as you can imagine, uh, uranium, if you've got 30% uranium uh, and uranium is very soluble, uh, so you can dissolve it, you leave a big void and it basically self mines itself. So uh, this is an absolute game changer for looking undercover. Uh, and like, these... like you say, the technology advancement has really opened up the opportunities. And here's, here's a classic example of one. Yeah, I think so. And if you look at analogies in gold, I spent a lot of time in W8s. You know, everybody was looking around Kalgoorlie and then they went out and found Tropicana on a completely different trend. Or they found the stuff in the Perth Basin, which, you know, nobody was really looking at. It's, it's these parallel trends where you sort of make a little bit of a jump and then uh, everybody's very wise in hindsight. But when we started assembling this about a year ago, uh, this, great, this ground was still available. It's not, a, it's not available now. We completely pegged all around. Uh, we've got ISO on one side. We've got Denison. We've got uh, Arano, the French. Um, they're, they're all around us. And in terms of the next six to 12 months, what does the activity flow look like? It's very, very busy. So we, uh, we're in the field now, We've, uh, we're building the roads. Uh, we'll be 
putting as much of our budget into the ground, David. We, we have very low overheads. Uh, we put our money into drill holes, geophysics and geochem in, to make a discovery. So we, we're flat out now from now right through until uh, August, September. Quality team, you've clearly assembled an, a, a more than interesting grand package uh, focused on drilling and exploration, which investors love because it creates news flow and and uh, and keeps the, the eyeballs on the stock. So, Andrew, congratulations to everything you and the team have achieved, and we look forward to following the company with interest. Thank you very much, David. Pleasure.